guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the 9.6 update test server and some of the main big changes that will be going on with this patch. So, the first thing I'd like to cover is there's going to be some new HD tanks. Looks like the Ferdinand's got an update. You can see it's got some pretty exquisite detail. Lots of extra junk thrown on the tank. Boxes and tracks and scratches and scrapes. And just generally the detail looks really fantastic. Very nice looking tank using the physicality based lightning or light lightning lighting which tries to simulate uh, what metal surfaces would look like when light interacts with them so as you can see looks quite nice so this is the Ferdinand next we'll take a look at the T95 this thing has lots of details poured into it tons of little details all over the sides you can see all the bolts and the axes and the picks and the tracks I especially like the dual tracks in the back they look really nice, they look really well done. You can see it's got a 50 cal machine gun on the top, wouldn't be American without the 50 cal. And you see there's a little bit of window glinting from these areas here on the cupolas, which is pretty cool. When you get really zoomed in, you can see that the, the, the textures aren't super, super high res, and that was more or less just to, to dumb things down for the Russian players. And it's kind of unfortunate that they don't still allow the HD textures for everybody because of uh, the size of the client is growing too large for, I guess, people in other nations that aren't in North America. Um, they have trouble, perhaps, downloading big clients all the time. So it's kind of unfortunate. It's a little bit blurry here. Like, you'll never really get that close in game, and from here it looks fine. It's when you get super close like this where you can see that there's a little bit loss in quality, but in general, they've done a pretty decent job with making the tanks look pretty good. Next, we'll take a look at the 704. Looks pretty good. Let's see, they've also chucked a machine gun on top. I don't remember it having that before, but maybe it did. I don't have a 704, so I'm not too sure. Someone will probably collect, correct me in the comments anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Some nice detailing in the back. You can see all these slats are actually modeled in, which is quite nice. Got a pickaxe just in case you need to dig through some permafrost. All these hatches are nice and circular on the top. Looks like someone spent a lot of time cutting those into the roof. Got some tow hooks in the front. Very nice looking tracks as well. Overall, I'd say the 704 looks pretty solid. Next, we'll take a look at some of the heavy tanks that upgraded to HD. And my favorite <laughs> tier 8 German tank, the Lion, just got an HD buff. So as you can see, it's got some nice detail. The barrel is nice and round. Some good scratching and denting all over the front of the tank. And I'm glad that they've added that sort of stuff into the game. I know they, they chastised War Thunder for that sort of thing, but these sort of nicks and cracks and bent metal things may lend the, the tank to look like they've actually been used and they haven't just rolled off the factory floor from Ferdinand Porsche's <laughs> factory, you know, sort of thing. So I really appreciate that those details are in there and that Wargaming didn't stick to its guns, which were wrong uh, when it comes to, to just damaging the models and bending things up a little bit. As you can see, the road wheels are nice and nice and round. Tracks look good. You can see they've cut all the little holes into the barrel, which is quite painstaking, actually. <laughs> it's one of the most annoying things to do. That barrel must cost a lot of triangles because they actually have to cut all those holes in there, which is a bit of a pain. But overall, generally, Lion looks pretty good. Next, we'll take a look at the 50B. Oh, no, we'll take a look at the Tiger P, another German. So, probably we're able to use some of the, the same stuff from the Ferdinand, but maybe not everything, since the, these tanks do share certain qualities in the hull. See, they've bent up the fenders and stuff. Generally, looks quite nice. These will look nice and round. Very high res. Cupola, nice and round. Just in general, looking pretty solid. And next, we'll take a look at the E100. Finally upgraded uh, HD. Again, this is another one of the tanks that has the holes in the, the end of the, the muzzle brake. 
Looks pretty cool. A little bit of rust going on in this tank. German's not using the good strength steel anymore. See some of the metal intersections there where they had uh, the turret welded together and everything. Some nice detailing. You'll see mostly this view. So, looks pretty solid. A little bit more of a simple tank, kind of like the mouse because there's not a whole heck of a lot of detail you can really pour into here. Most of this is going to be done in another external package called ZBrush or Mudbox where they create a normal map where they've dented the edges on these sorts of things and it's really just using the normals, the polygon normals on this model to try and in the normal map to reflect these sorts of indentations that don't really exist in in polygons. Like this corner that's rounded off, that's been chipped off with actual polygons but all the scratches and dents and stuff, typically that stuff is just completely flat, but it's just enhanced with a normal map. And all the, the edges are nice and rounded and stuff, and that's all just the same, same sort of thing. You round the corners off. So that's looking pretty solid. Next we'll take a look at the 50B. I actually think this is the best looking tank that they did out of the bunch. This and the Ferdinand were the ones that impressed me the most, just because it has uh, more of a round looking uh, state to the, its its hull. It's got a little bit of the pike nose going on. Really nice looking detailing. Like the little fuel can on the side. Got a little machine gun on top. But overall in general I think that this is probably one of my favorite tanks that's gone to HD. Looking pretty good. Pretty pretty good pretty good. Next, they have upgraded all the stuff for this contacts layer. You can go in here and you can turn a bunch of things on and off. Like, say I want to make a folder, call it tomatoes. So I can just take, let's say arson. He's a tomato. We'll put him in the tomato file. See, and then you can make these expandable or not. So, if you want to drag people around, put them people in different slots and stuff, you can do that sorts of thing. It, it looks decent. It looks better than the normal chat windows, which kind of still look the same. But uh, just in general, I think it's pretty well done. Uh, it seems to be functioning properly, so uh, I haven't been able to break it or anything. Next, we'll take a look at crew retraining. So if you go into here, you can now change your major qualification on all the, the tank crew people. The unfortunate thing is that it costs 600 gold to do so. And that's fairly heftily, I don't know, that's like three or four, I think, dollars when you, you convert it into real cash currency as far as uh, North American currency goes. So maybe it'd be a little bit less in euros and everything else probably a lot more expensive for people in Russia since their currency is just tanked into the toilet but just in general that's another thing you can do you hit change and then you say for what tank and if you want to change them into a loader a gunner a driver and then the cost is down here so that's pretty cool and just in general other than that some of the big things that have changed in this patch have been the ARL got a buff, 350 view range. But unfortunately for many other tanks, and most of those were TDs, they had their view range nerfterized. So if we go over to the tank destroyers, we'll look at the 50B. This thing used to have 390 view range because that was balanced. <laughs> But now it's only got 310, so you're going to need your binos, your coded optics if you want to do any sort of scouting for yourself. But uh, just for the most part, I think this is a good change because it more or less forces t TDs to be more reliant on their team and they're less reliant on themselves to just sit in a bush and be able to murderize everyone who has to try and find them and kill them at the end of the game to win. Um, this was especially in evident with this tank or tanks like the Hellcat. Uh, things with very, very good camo ratings like T49s where they could spot you and aim it on you and shoot you and track you and blow you to pieces before you could really do too much about it. So I think that's a pretty good change. 
The next change that they've done that's fairly significant is the accuracy adjustment that they have decided to institute into this new patch. Um, I won't have any footage of it in this video, but I will probably do a follow-up video showing maybe how it, it's affected at certain ranges and stuff. But basically, it's going to stop people from snapshotting. Where That's a, a technique where people just pop out, completely don't aim their shots, and they just go with volume over um, quality. So they don't aim their shots. They just assume with the, the, the last accuracy buff that it occurred that their shots may or may not hit. But they were hitting a lot more often than they used to and people weren't aiming their shots. And you can see that when you watch certain players play. I'm a player that does prefer to actually aim his shots a little bit more. I don't like to pop out snapshot, pop out snapshot, and just fire tons and tons of shots. Um, but if you watch other players play, especially on Twitch, you can see that uh, certain players will just, especially players from, if you ever watch Simp's stream, um, Blue Boy's captain has a stream, and when he plays, he would pop up, and he's only up for like a quarter of a second, take a shot, pop up, you know, as soon as he can, and he just goes with absolute volume on his shots, because that last accuracy buff that they did made it so the tanks were a little bit more, they were just too accurate, and, and it, it kind of made the game... I don't know. It just kind of demeaned accuracy on certain tanks, but I'm not sure how this is going to fully affect, like, if it's going to make it so if you fully aim your shots, that your shots are going to deviate a lot more. I kind of think that would be a mistake. I think this should only punish people who pull out and don't, if they're just going to snapshot. I would be okay with it, it kind of affecting those sorts of people, or if you're driving along in a KV-2 and you decide to turn your turret and fire at a tank 400 meters away, that sort of thing. I am completely fine with it being a lot worse, but... If they're going to take like sniper tanks like my lion and make it so my shots deviate a lot more, then I think it's kind of just going to maybe push people into firing gold rounds more or just try... I don't know if it's their attempt at trying to suck the, the battle engagements in or... I know that one of their attempts is to try and make armor more relevant, especially on tanks like the, the T-95 and, and the Ferdinand and such that rely a little bit more on armor than anything else. But uh, that's one of the things they've changed. It's going to be the probably the the most controversial thing that they've added to this patch. Uh, I will run a few games, and I will probably have a better opinion on it in the next video I do. But it's one of the things you're going to watch out for. Whether this makes it into the next patch or not um, is up for discussion, like if they actually decide to implement it or not. But it sounds like they're going to, so look out for that. All right, that's going to be my quick look at the 9.6 patch update. I will be doing a little bit of gameplay stuff on some new tanks that are coming out in the future because I am getting a Wargaming press account soon. So thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time. Actually, my bad. There was one other huge significant thing that was uh, instituted in this patch, and that was the Scouts buffs. They have decided to buff a lot of tanks for the the Chinese, for everyone except for pretty much the... The poor T-37 and the M-41, they just got nerfed in general from aim time, not aim times, but reload times and a little bit of um, ground resistance type stuff. Um, the French mostly didn't get buffed because their light tanks were, they're pretty solid still. I don't like the 12T personally. 1375 is actually pretty decent and the 1390 definitely doesn't need any sort of buff in what, in any way whatsoever. So the French didn't get buffed, but uh, a lot of tanks, uh, including the, the Chinese and some of the other American uh, light tanks, also got buffed. The, the Soviet tanks, the MT-25, got some buffs. And if you take a look at the Germans, there was some buffs to some of these tanks as well. And we found out that the Awful Panther is also leaving us soon, which is also quite nice. So... Just one couple other things to add there. Thank you for watching.